Hey everyone, Ben Yunsen here. That was an original of mine, which you can check out up here. And having written a lot of original music recently, it caused me to reflect back on some of my most important guitar influences, particularly guitar solos that had a significant impact on the way I play. So today, I'd like to share with you 10 guitar solos, which I happen to think are 10 of the greatest guitar solos ever recorded. And since the primary focus of my playing is improvisation, you'll notice a theme throughout these 10 solos that they are also improvisationally focused. If you've joined me on my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of lists or ranking musicians or songs. In fact, I think the only time I ever went on a type of rant here on my channel was in this video up here. But today's collection of solos will be presented in no particular order. These are just solos that had a big impact on me. And I would put the same question to you. If there were 10 guitar solos that you thought were among the greatest ever recorded and had a huge impact on your playing, or perhaps just on you as a listener, what would they be? Drop a comment and let me know. Our first solo today was played by the legendary LA guitarist Jay Graydon. And for those of you familiar with Jay's work, you'll know that he's more than just a brilliant guitarist. He has an unbelievable list of credits as an arranger, producer, composer, you name it. In fact, I even interviewed Jay a couple of years ago and asked him all the things that I wanted to know, and you can check that out right up here. But the particular solo that we're going to be talking about today is from an album by Steve Kipner called Knock the Walls Down, and the song is called The Ending. Jay's solo on The Ending has to be one of the most gripping, genre-defying, exciting guitar solos ever recorded. And while it's possible that Jay's best-known guitar soloing moment is on Peg by Steely Dan, this, for me, may well be one of the greatest guitar solos ever recorded, and in my opinion, is Jay in peak form. You've got to check it out. Next up, we have one of my first guitar heroes and inspirations, one of the greatest ever, and that is George Benson. Now, when you're thinking about legendary George Benson guitar solos, you might wonder, where do you start? There are so many of them. But this particular solo has always stood out to me as not only representing George's incredible ability on the instrument, but also his stylistic versatility. And this solo is on a song called Being With You from his album In Your Eyes from 1983. Now this is an interesting tune. It's written by the great drummer Omar Hakim, who around this time had just joined Weather Report. But George's solo in this track is particularly striking to me because I think it has just about everything you could ever ask for in a solo. Brilliant time and technique, beautiful melody, and most importantly, a beautiful sound. Next up, we have a guitarist that you may not know by name immediately, but you've certainly heard him on countless recordings, live shows, you name it. And this guitarist is George Wadinius. Particularly, I'd like to talk about George Wadinius' solo on the live version of Reelin' in the Years by Steely Dan from their 1995 album Alive in America. Now, Elliot Randall's guitar solo on the original recording of Reelin' in the Years back from 1972 is, of course, one of the most legendary guitar solos ever recorded and certainly a solo that had a large impact on me. But hearing George Wadinius solo on this song in a live setting presents an entirely different dimension of the piece of music itself. I've always found George's solo on this piece of music, particularly toward the climactic ending, to be particularly inspiring, if not even a bit uplifting. 
It's one of my favorite guitar solos ever recorded. And I think it's also worth noting on this track that you can hear Walter Becker taking a really nice guitar solo as well, as well as a young Chris Potter taking a fantastic improvised sax solo. By the way, if you've been enjoying this video so far, make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my upcoming playing videos lesson videos or discussions a bit like this one. And if you'd like to take your playing to the next level, join me at bensguitarclub.com where you can develop your playing with my mini lessons, masterclasses and bundle packages, including the BGC bundle, which features all of my mini lessons and masterclasses in one package. Next up, I'd like to discuss a legendary guitarist who's been so important in terms of my own personal development as a musician. And I'm sure he's been important to you too. And that would be Pat Metheny. Of all the brilliant Pat Metheny solos that you can think of, for example, his death defying solo break on Third Wind or his brilliant playing on Bright Size Life at a very young age, the one that stands out to me the most is actually on one of his beautiful ballads. In particular, a piece of music called If I Could from the album First Circle. This, for me, is Pat's finest moment on record. I'm not sure if I've ever heard another guitarist deliver such stunning improvised melodic statements. Next up, we have another guitarist who had an incredible impact on me early on. Now, I play nothing like this guitarist, but the influence is still very much there. And I'm talking about Stanley Jordan, particularly Stanley's album Magic Touch, which has a version of Rod Temperton's classic, The Lady in My Life. This to me is just one of the most stunning guitar solos ever recorded, including everything from the clarity of the sound the beauty of the linear ideas, everything. One of the finest guitar moments in recorded history. Next, we have another legendary and incredibly influential guitarist on our list, Mike Stern. I was lucky to be around Mike a fair bit when I used to play at the 55 bar a lot, and watching him play live was always a masterclass in itself. I have many favorite solos of Mike's, but in particular, I've always loved his solo on a song called Little Shoes, which is the second track from his album Upside Downside. I really think this album captured an incredible moment, not only in Mike's playing, but also in the New York City music scene, was produced by Hiram Bullock, and Mike was just playing at such a brilliantly high level, especially having just come off tour with Miles Davis, around that time. Mike absolutely lets loose on this song and for that matter on this whole album and I'd really encourage you to check it out. It's very inspiring. John Abercrombie is a guitar legend who's had an immense impact on my playing and in particular I always loved an album that he did with Ralph Towner called Five Years Later. As I understand, the album is called Five Years Later, as it occurred roughly five years after their first duo album, Sargasso Sea. But from the album Five Years Later, the final track, Child's Play, which is one of John Abercrombie's compositions as well. It's a beautiful example of both Ralph and John, but there's really something about John's beautifully melodic solo on this piece of music that I've always found to be incredibly captivating. You've got to go and check it out. Those of you who've joined me here on my channel for some time will know that one of my earliest guitar influences was the great Andy Summers. Now, particularly for his time in the police, Andy was of course famous for his beautiful textural sounds that really filled out the trio setting like no one else had done before. But in addition to this, I've always loved Andy's incredibly individualistic soloing approach, which you can hear on his own solo records, but also in particular on Driven to Tears from the album Zenyatta Mondata from 1980. Driven to Tears is of course one of the very famous police songs of that era. But what I find to be most fascinating about this song is 
Andy's solo right in the middle. It's no secret that Andy's origins as a guitarist stylistically begin with jazz. And to me, this almost sounds like Andy's taking an Ornette Coleman type approach, a very free approach to soloing within this presumably rock trio setting. It's a very unusual, distinctive and creative solo. And every time I hear it, I think, why does that work? And the fact is, it just does work. Andy is one of the great guitarists of all time, and that's just one example that I love of his playing. Next up, we have a guitarist that, if you know my playing style, you might be surprised that this is someone who I consider to be a big influence. And that is the brilliant Earl Clue. I've always admired Earl Clue for so many reasons. His approach to melody, his beautiful sound, and I think that these two elements, at least, are beautifully on show on his album Late Night Guitar from 1980. And in my opinion, there's no better example of this than his solo guitar take of Tenderly, a great old standard tune. And interestingly, one that has been played many times by many brilliant guitarists, especially as a solo piece. I can think of wonderful performances by Tommy Emmanuel, George Benson, and many others. For me, this is just the most stunning performance of this piece of music. And in fact, that whole album is one that I really recommend that you check out. Finally, we have another brilliant solo performance by another guitarist who you might not immediately think would be an influence of mine, but most certainly is. And that is Tuck Andrus performing the beautiful standard body and soul from his album Reckless Precision. Of course, Tuck Andrus has played for so many years as part of Tuck and Patty, and I would jump at just about any chance to hear Tuck play live. But this album, one of only two solo guitar albums that he ever released, is an absolutely stunning record. And this piece of music, probably along with his version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow, are just absolutely iconic in my opinion. And there you have it, 10 of the greatest guitar solos that I've found to be hugely important in terms of my own personal musical development. Perhaps you've listened to one of these, or maybe all of them. Maybe you have a completely different list of guitar solos altogether. Make sure to jump in the comments and let me know what you think. And once again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my upcoming playing videos, lesson videos, and discussions about music. And if you'd like to continue to develop your playing, join me at bensguitarclub.com. I'll see you next time.